Hey, it's Greg with Scholar Farms, and today I'm going to do a quick review of the Parrot Bluegrass, one of the newer drones that are out there by Parrot uh, for plant mapping. And then also we're going to talk about Pix40 Fields, a brand new product that was released by Pix40 just today. So the bluegrass. So let's talk a little bit about the bluegrass. I've had one here for testing, a bit of an odd shape. Uh, but an interesting drum. So it runs retails for $5,000 US, which is interesting in that the Sequoia camera, which is in, built into the bluegrass here, you can see on the bottom here, uh, if I focus in the camera, you can see the four band camp of bluegrass. So you're getting red, green, red edge and near infrared for plant mapping. Every time that camera triggers, then you're getting uh, single TIFF files off, so four TIFF files. There's also an RGB camera on Sequoia, not that great of a camera, um, but okay in terms of getting kind of general mapping. On the front of the camera then, if I can focus it in, uh, you also have the standard uh, Bebop camera, so it's a 1080 video camera for getting a live feed from the drone. So if you're out there crop scouting or, or uh, just want to get some video of your fields, you can do that. The flight time on this platform is about 25 minutes and it, that comes with three LiPo batteries. These are pretty beefy lithium polymer batteries with a standard XT60 connector. So they're not smart batteries per se, uh, so standard battery care applies. One of the downsides of this drone is actually the battery bay. So it does come with this uh, here, I'll go ahead and focus it in. It does come with this battery cover. Um, and my concerns about this when I'm flying is that it could pop off. It's just kind of a clip that, that pops on there and this kind of tail comes out. And I think that there could be some work to make this a little more secure. I tend to put a little piece of tape on there uh, while I'm flying out in the field. The other aspect of it is it is a little bit heavy. It comes in at about two kilos and it flies a little bit heavier. It just feels kind of uh, that the weight is there. I've had to slow down the drone a little when it's landing autonomously so that uh, I get a more gentle landing. And these little feet that are on the bottom here can be a little bit tippy. And so you do want to land on a level surface. The big win though for this particular drone is that you can fly with the Sky Controller 2 here. It's a standard controller for a Bebop and a Disco. I can pull out my phone and use Pix4D Capture to plan a square or a polygon mission, set my altitude, and then the drone flies, it triggers automatically, and when it lands then, I can just pull the SD card out of the sunshine sensor, the irradiance sensor that's on the top. This is a sensor for collecting light data so you can correct your maps for sunny days or cloudy days. That's important for plant mempy. I can pull this card out within 10 minutes or 20 minutes of my flight time triggering and I have all the data right there and then I can plug that into Pix4D, uh, into Pix4D Fields, a new desktop processing for Pix4D. So let's go ahead and cut to the screencast for Pix4D Fields and we'll look at some data. So here we are in the main interface for Pix4D Fields. This is desktop and I'm using a Mac. You can get both Mac and PC, which is a nice change from the standard Pix4D desktop processing, which was only PC before or cloud. So here you have some example data sets, a demo data set. I'm gonna click on new project and we'll just do example one and I'll go ahead and create my project. This takes me to a page where I can either import my images, so the flights that I've already collected data or import a GeoTIFF, so a processed map that from jobs that I've already processed in Pix4D before. I'm gonna go ahead and process a real job here in real time with you and we'll go ahead and click on import images. And then I'll just go ahead and highlight all of the images and I'll just drag them in. So we have about 267 or so triggers and I'm just gonna click on open then and then this is 1300 uh, images total or about three gigs of data and then I'll just click start processing and then it'll import the images and that actually takes the most amount of time is just importing the images and opening up each file here you can see it's processing in real time so I'm out here in the middle of the desert this is not an agriculture example this is a desert example and uh, right now it's just opening them up but you can see it's stitching them and processing them it's using the red and green band so from the single bands that are captured on a global shutter and that way you're getting pretty accurate imagery and you don't have to worry about the rolling shutter and so here you can see it's stitching all together and then it's interpreting the the blue band so you get a false color 
orthomosaic in the end. So here it's, we'll just go ahead and let it process. You can see it's about 13% of the way done or so, um, but this shows you in real time, it's aligning the imagery, it's orthorectifying or correcting for the tilt or the perspective. And so we'll just go ahead and let that run. Okay, it's taking about eight minutes or so to process, but I noticed that my fans turned on on my computer and I needed to stop the screen recording. And so I think the screen recording actually slowed it down just a little bit uh, in terms of taking up memory. But here's the finished product. And so seven, eight minutes later or so, uh, I think typically you're looking at about four minutes uh, if I wasn't trying to do multitasking in screen recording. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my field boundaries then. You, here you can see a car for scale, uh, and then I'm just gonna kind of draw the boundary around the main focal area that I'm really interested in for mapping. And this isn't an agricultural example. Uh, there'll be lots of those. I'm gonna go ahead and trim the layers here, and we'll look at that. Here you can see now it's trimmed out, and I'm just getting this focal area. I've cut out some of the edges that I'm not as much interested in. You can see that it's done a bit of a kind of an RGB false color uh, look, so I can just scout it out. And then we'll go to Index Calculator, and I can go ahead and then here's the different indices from NDVI to green NDVI and some of these NDRE, some of these other indices in there. I won't go into detail in them now, but we'll go ahead and click Generate. And about 10 seconds later or so, we get our different indices. So here on the left side, you can see your different indices. At the top, then, we can do a couple of different things. So we can, first, I'll just click through these different indices, and there's different visualization options. This GNDVI shows the shrubs pretty readily here from the background information. I can change the color to um, from red to green to, say, a thermal color, and that actually makes the visualization pop pretty well. You can see the individual shrubs. Here's the king clone. Uh, this is supposed to be one of the oldest clones of creosote out there in the world, 10,000 years old or so. Um, it's pretty impressive. Now, one of the interesting new tools for Pix4D is actually the comparisons here. And so with this comparison screen, I can pick what I want to compare. So I'm gonna compare this green NDVI to the orthomosaic here, this kind of color look to it. So I can have that on the left and the, uh, or on the right and the, and the index value on the left. And then I can move it back and forth so I can see the full screen or just part of the screen. But what I really like is a split screen so that I can compare the color or that false color to um, the actual NDVI, kind of like a before and after. And that's actually very intuitive to me being out in the field if I'm trying to look at the color as well as the index and compare the two. And it helps me scout problems pretty quickly. We can also go back and we can do zonation or prescription. So here's my zonation. So if I was doing precision agriculture and wanted to divide my fields into, say, six zones at high map detail for these NDVI values, I would then generate those. And then here you can see my different prescriptions as well. And I can go in here and fill in the rates. This doesn't necessarily apply to a natural ecosystem, um, but if I had a nice homogenous field that I was looking at for row crops or, or other kind of specialty crops, that would be very useful. And then I could just, again, click apply, and I would have that data layer ready in a shape file to export. I can also annotate, so I can go in here, I can add an annotation, and I can say, okay, here is the king clone, and I'll go ahead and save that, and that annotation is right there. And then I can export my data as well. I can click on the different data layers that I want to export, and go ahead and export those and have those results ready to go. So that's a wrap on Pix4D fields. I think combined with some of these integrated solutions such as the Parrot Bluegrass or Disco Pro Ag, as well as an EBSQ, or eventually I think they're going to support a whole range of cameras such as uh, Micasense Red Edge or some of these other platforms. And so to be able to stitch data very quickly combined with integrated hardware and sensors together. Ideally, this would be all done on board even. I think that's, you know, generation two would be that you could just process right on board on your drone. You wouldn't even have to pull the card out. But in the near term, I'm not complaining because this is a great ad and a great workflow. I think they'll just improve the tools and the processing and the visualizations over time. And if we look at pricing, it's $2,500 a year or $250 for a single month. So I could see you could buy it just a month at a time throughout the growing season if as needed, or you could invest in the whole year.
So that's a wrap on an unboxing of the bluegrass. Again, 5K for the drone, three batteries, a nice soft pack for carrying out in the field, uh, the controller, and a fully integrated Sequoia camera. And then Pix4D Fields, a new product by Pix4D for rapid processing. Really a game changer when it comes to service providers that are trying to process plant mapping data sets out in the field in real time so you can get out there uh, and really inspect and ground truth your data just right after a flight. So I'm Greg with Scholar Farms and I hope this is interesting to you. If it is, subscribe to the channel or ping me at greg at scholarfarms.com and we'll talk to you again soon.